Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. G'day and welcome back to Google Made Easy. My name is Peter Moriarty. I'm your host for this episode presented by Business Blueprint. Now, what are we gonna be covering today? This episode, we're gonna be covering how to get more out of Google Sites. So this is our intermediate session. If, um, if, you, haven't, uh, if you weren't around for our first session where we, where we did the basics of Google Sites, um, this session is gonna be going a little bit more into detail, so make sure you check out our first episode on Google Sites on the basics. Um, but this session is gonna be intermediate stuff. So hopefully you've already got started with Google Sites and, uh, and we're going to get into it. Now, two quick things before we get started, you need to remember. Number one, we're going to get really practical in this session. So if you've got your computer ready to follow along with us, that's fantastic. If you've got pen and paper and you're going to take some notes, that's great again. Uh, we're going to get super practical and we're going to be implementing right here uh, in the room as we're going through the tips. And number two, most important, make sure that you engage with myself and the rest of the Business Blueprint community on social. So make sure you're using the hashtags Google Made Easy and Business Blueprint on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever your social network is of choice, uh, and make sure you follow me as well at Peter Moriarty. Great to connect with you on social, and I look forward to catching up with you there. So a quick one, what are we going to cover in this episode on Google Sites? First up, we're going to do a super quick recap of what we covered in the last Google Sites episode. So that's setting up and the basics, uh, just getting into Google Sites and you know where does Google Sites sit and all of that kind of stuff. Next up, we're going to go through how to embed images. Now, we touched on that in the last episode, uh, but I'm going to show you some of the more advanced settings of embedding images into your Google Sites. Next up, how to embed a Google Calendar. So you can get your calendar in there um, and get all of your calendar events um, embedded straight into your Google site so you can share them with the rest of your team on your intranet. Next up, how to embed Google Docs or Google Spreadsheets. So if you've created a document and you'd like to have that document shared with your team, um, then we're going to show you how to actually embed those Google Docs from your Google Drive straight into your Google site. Next up, how to embed Google Charts from a spreadsheet. So a Google Chart is a, uh, is a graph. Uh, we're going to show you how to get those in there. Uh, next up, how to embed a Google Form. So if you've seen one of our other episodes on uh, getting started with Google Docs, um, you would have noticed Google Forms, and we've got an episode on that on how to rock and roll with Google Forms. Next up, we'll go through how to embed a Google Drive folder into your Google site. So this one's a, a bit more of an advanced one. This is if you want to display the contents of a Google Drive folder in your Google site, um, then that's one that we're going to be going through. Next up, how to embed a flowchart from an app called LucidChart. Uh, so if you've watched some of our other episodes on uh, using LucidChart, uh, or maybe you've seen Pete on Teach Me Tech uh, show you how to use LucidChart for creating flowcharts and diagrams and mind maps and that kind of stuff, uh, I'm going to show you how to embed those right into your Google site, which is great for any of your process maps um, or flowcharts that you want to get into your site. Next up, we'll go through advanced Google Sites permissions. So we've gone through the basic permissions uh, in our first episode. We're going to go through advanced permissions uh, in this episode and show you how to get more out of the Google Sites permissions. And finally, we're going to be covering how to add a horizontal navigation menu to your Google site. So if you've currently got a Google site and uh, you've got a vertical navigation menu, but you want to get a cool little horizontal navigation menu along the top, then we're going to be covering that as well. So let's get started. Time to get rocking and rolling. So first of all, a quick recap of our last session on Google Sites. Now, we talked a little bit about why it's important to have an intranet for your business to store your systems, processes, policies, training materials, and standard operating procedures of your business online. Using Google Sites for this allows you to share it with your team nice and easily. They can access it from their mobile devices, they can access it from iPads, they can access it from wherever they are geographically in the world just by logging on to Google Sites using their Google account. What this is great for is having one library and one knowledge base in a searchable database of all of your standard operating procedures easily accessible by all of your team. And the result is for your business, when you create these operating procedures, when you focus on 
building a library to teach and train your team is that everything in your business will become more consistent. Everyone in your business will have a better idea of how things are done around here. And so Google Sites is really important for not only building value in your business so it's more of a sellable asset when you go to potentially transition out of you running the business day to day, but also just having that consistency and delivery to your team and to your clients is going to be absolutely fantastic and supported by Google Sites. So that's a quick rundown of Google Sites and how we use it to create an intranet for a small business. Now, to access Google Sites, remember you need to go to sites.google.com and you sign in with your Google account, whether it's a Gmail account or a Google Apps for Business account, that will get you access to the Google Sites that you've created. So I'm going to show you the basics of how to access that so you can see how I access my Google Site. So let's step over to my computer here. And I'm going to go ahead and open a new tab so you can see exactly what it looks like. And I'm going to type in sites.google.com. And as soon as I visit that website, you'll see a list of all of the Google sites that I've actually created. So you can see there's a number of sites here that I've created under the Google account. And we're going to choose just one of those to work on today, which is Kids Sunshirts, which is our adopted business at Business Blueprint. We're going to keep going with the demo site that we started building in the last episode of Google Made Easy. So let's go ahead and go to Shirt Site, which is the site that we created in the last episode. So that's how you access your Google site. And that's a quick rundown of the basics of getting connected to your Google site. So first up, let's go through how to embed images into our Google site. Now, this is important whether you're taking screenshots of a process, uh, whether you're taking photos on a phone, uh, and you want to get those into your Google site and embedded uh, so that information can be stored alongside the process that you're building. Let's go in and see how we can embed these images. So on any of the pages that I'm working on, I can just go straight ahead and click the Edit button to edit the page, and that's going to bring up the page editor for me. Now, to insert an image, it's as straightforward as clicking the Insert button and then choosing Image. And here we've got a couple of options to upload an image. So let's go ahead and upload a standard image from my computer. I just click the Upload Images button, and I can go ahead and choose one of the images from my computer. Now, it doesn't have to be in my Google Drive. This image could be just on my desktop, could be in one of my documents folders. Any image, whether it's a JPEG or a PNG, doesn't really matter what format. As long as that's a static image, you can upload that into your Google site. Now, it's important to know that Google will actually host these images for you as part of the Google site. Google will actually take care of storage. If you're on a Google for Work business plan, you get up to 10 gigabytes of storage on your Google site, which is heaps, and I promise you'll never fill that. So embedding the image, Google is going to host that image for us when we're using the upload image feature. Let's go ahead and get one of these images uploaded and add it to this page on the site. So uh, let's choose one of our images here. Uh, you can see we've got a, a PNG of the logo. I'm going to click Open, and then I'll just wait for that to upload. And then when I'm ready, all I need to do is click the OK button, and the image has been embedded. Now, notice this, this image is super big. It's gone right across the page, and it's gone further than we actually have room for in the page. Luckily, Google gives us some options so we can modify how the image looks when it's on the page. So if you see here along the top, I can choose the alignment of the image. So I can choose to align it to the center or even to the right side. Now, the image is too big for any of those to take effect right now, so they're not really going to make much difference. Next up, I've got the option to choose between small, medium, or large, and that's going to dynamically change the size of our image. You can see I've just chosen small here. Medium makes it a little bit larger, and then the large size just a tiny bit larger again. But what I prefer to do, and I recommend that you do this for your image editing as well, is you click on the 100% button. And what that does is that will automatically resize the image to the size of the page that it's on. What this means is the Google site and the image will be responsive to the size of the device that's being viewed on. So whether that's a computer, whether that's a laptop, whether it's a tablet, whether it's uh, even a mobile device, all of those are going to automatically see the right size of the picture so you can automatically get the best experience on no matter what device you're using. So we've chosen 100% there. Obviously, the original button is going to take it back to original, but we're going to leave it on 100%.
Now you can also choose whether or not you want to wrap text around the image by clicking the wrap buttons. And if I'd like to change the image that's in there or even remove the image, I've got a couple of buttons to do that as well. So once I click the Save button, that image has been inserted into that page. Nice and easy, straightforward. Now, what about some of the other options for adding images? What if we want to say hot link to an image that's hosted somewhere else? It might be hosted on our website. It might be hosted on a third party website. Now, typically, we don't recommend hot linking images because if the image hosting changes at the other side, then that means that the image will disappear from your website because we're not actually hosting it on Google Sites. But I will show you how to do it because it's going to become important later on in this episode for one special use case. So let's go ahead and edit the page again. And uh, let's add a hot linked image. So I'm going to go ahead and click Insert Image. And you'll notice here that there's a second option, which is insert image from web address. So that's where we put in the image URL of a photo. So let's go ahead and uh, let's look for an image. Let's uh, search for a Ferrari on, uh, on image search. Here we go. Fantastic. This looks great. Let's uh, see the image in full. Now notice here in the title bar, in our address bar, I've got the full image address. So you can see here we've got the full picture address. So let's go ahead and copy this. And this URL is what we're going to use to hotlink to that image. So I'm going to paste the image URL and automatically Google is going to hotlink that image from the internet down and into our Google site. Now remember, if that image changes by the owner of whoever's hosted that image, then it's... To continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.